I was here in the park maybe about a month ago, did an event with my purple truck here, come out to bring you the word of God. But I'm also not just a survivor. I am also an advocate for gun violence. My son, Daryl Allen Hurst II, was killed six years ago in a store called American Best Wings in Temple Hills, Maryland. My son called me and said, Dad, I'm about to get something from American Best Wings. You want something? I said, no, nah, I'm good. See you in a minute. I get a call 15 minutes later that he had been shot in the head and taken to Southern Maryland Hospital. My only son, my 20-year-old son, who, when I got to the hospital to see him, his entire head was bandaged up because the bullet went through his head, causing two holes. Only this right eye was open, but it was staring backwards. I knew at that time I had lost him. I knew that the doctor explained to me what was going on, but I continued to pray to God, not understanding why this happened to me. But because I know God and knew God, and I was studying the word of God, I knew that God had a purpose in my life because of this. And so they announced my son dead that night at 105 on May the 6th. And I accepted it, but it hurt. Leaving there without him, I stayed up for five days straight, no sleep. My son and mother funeral was on the same date a year apart. My mother died May the 2nd of 2015. He was killed May the 5th of 2016. This is the pain and grief I did with. But I went to God and I said that, you said that you knew the plan you had for me, but it was not to harm me, but I felt harmed. You said that you wouldn't put more on me than I could bear. Then what makes you think I could bear to do this? And I told him that if he allowed me to bide under the shadow of his wings and hide me in this pavilion, I, and restore me, I will serve him. As of April of 2021, I became Minister Darrell Hurst. God restored me. Since April, since April of 2017, I started doing my own event. I went on Black Rose Show in 2017, where I first started at. She gave me my first open door to come out. But ever since then, I fight gun violence. This is what I do. I go to crime neighborhoods where they tell me a kid been killed, where there's a body at. I go to it. I don't have time to sit back and talk because I'm tired of seeing my brothers and sisters suffering in yoke and bondage and captivity. My brothers and sisters in this park are suffering in yoke, bondage, and captivity. And it's a choice of the community to bring us out of this or bring them out of it. It ain't a choice that they start doing this. It was a trauma in their life, a situation in their life that brought them out to the point that they felt that drugs and alcohol would medicate their brain and make them feel better. But it only destroyed them because that's what the enemy wants. As a man of God, I'm here to talk about what the devil doing to our community. Every time we wake up in the morning, somebody been shot and killed. It was always youth killing one another. Now we're killing young kids. Young kids' lives are being taken by straight bullets. We sitting out here, straight bullets ring throughout. Young teenagers, what I call tough Tony guys, want to be thugs, run around with guns, shooting at other people, don't care who in the environment, don't care who. Uh, 13 year old boy shot last week on Alabama Avenue. Five year old boy shot the other week on Mars Road. I just did the event over in Lansdowne where the eight-year-old BJ was killed at. Yeah. I went there. PJ. But at PJ, yeah, PJ. Hey. Yeah, I don't want Tiffany uh, to hear me say that. No. <laughs> AJ, rest in peace, 21. Amen. Hey, don't, don't say his name. Mm -hmm. Amen. That's right. Amen. That's right. Amen. 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 So as I said, God, if you look around and look at life today, if you don't think you need a Savior, there's something wrong. If you think it's you that wake you up every morning, something wrong. Your thought pattern is off because it's God to give life. And I'm thankful to be alive today. But like I said, not only am I a survivor, so I care about other people. I make sure that family get um, therapy. I make sure that family get um, any treatment they need when they come to gun violence of losing a loved one and a kid. Not only especially going missing, but also in a car accident or medical. Losing a child is the terrible most pain you can ever take. People would tell you that, well, you know, my grandmother died or somebody died. Okay, that, we understand that. That was life. That is not but when the someone same. come and take a child yeah. or take your life, that's a whole different thing. Whole different thing. Because it's unacceptable to you. My favorite son, my favorite mother, my favorite brother, sister, whoever it was to you to get killed by gun violence, 
that thing is a whole different thing. And God is truly amazing to allow me to be here today to do what I do. I've been doing it for seven years. I do my own live stream radio show, but right now I'm in the community doing outreach ministry, feeding the homeless and making sure that people get the word of God. Pretty soon I'll be doing revivals. So, but my thing is, like I said, I started with Black Rose and I appreciate what she do for the community, her and Amy, Ms. Um, Keller. You know, they all been out to my show, but if we can come together as a community, they help one another. But we cause it to destroy one another, tearing one another down. Where do they get these drugs from out here in the community? From our black people. It's us. We constantly giving one another stuff, constantly destroying one another, constantly tearing one another down, and constantly killing one another. Why do guns have to be the answer to your anger? Why do guns have to be the answer to your madness? Why? Why? And then whenever, when kids life are being taken of you doing what you're doing, then you're running high. You're running high. You don't sit around and say, I did this, or turn yourself in. You're running high, you come up, and you come out and see that people. And it's unacceptable to me. And I hope that something be done different. I hope the judicial system do better. Stop letting these guys back out in jail. If you catch them with a gun on them, hold them. You know, they got no treatment programs for young youth kids today. The other day I did a Facebook Live. I asked the young people, what the young men is out here carrying guns. I'm gonna ask you again here on everybody else's Facebook page. What do you want? What do you want that we can take these guns out of your hand and stop you from firing? You don't own nothing. Northeast against Northwest, Riverdale against mm. Lincoln Heights. So. Y'all naming all you this stuff speak. that nothing you own. You don't even That's own right. it. You just happen to live there. So you just want to be tough, Tony, and walk around with like you bad. But you only bad because you got the gun in your hand. But without the gun, you're nobody. But God gave life for people to live, mm -hmm. to grow up. He didn't give it to us for other people to take. So I tell people, other people, behaviors and actions, decisions and choices, cause hurt and pain to other people. Mm -hmm. We're doing it every day in our black community. Yes, our yeah. ancestors come a long way to getting right. us to where we at today for us to only destroy one another life, take one another life. Every time we wake up, it was a black man that killed my son, a black man that shot that child, a black man that shot that child. Each and every day, this is happening. But this is why I go out and do what I do. I go out there to make a difference. I ain't got time to keep talking about it. Every time Mary Bowser step out or somebody come out and want to talk, ain't no need to keep talking. Exactly. We got to get something yeah. done. How many more lives of children, of babies, have to die before we come up with a better decision and choice? I pray that they start seeking God focus. To understand what God wants them to do and stop thinking about what we're going to do. I don't think about when I go out there. I don't think about with me. I ask God what he want me to do. And that's what they need to do besides Every time a vote come up, vote for me, I got you. And then it turns out to be all about you and not about the community. Yeah. You forget the community. And I just pray that we, as black people, can honestly come together one day and love one another. Because a lot of us don't love ourselves. Every time I get up in the morning, I do praise and worship. I think about people who are hopeless today. I pray that my brothers and sisters will rise up and come into their purpose. They are here bound up in suffering. You go by the corner, you see them hanging on the curb, hanging over a chair, hanging down in the street. My sister's walking the street prostitute one another. Why? Why? Because our own black neighborhood is doing it. And I tell people, I go back to slavery. Slavery, our ancestors was dogs. And we had that one that was in the house, the house nigga. Mm -hmm. The house nigga that yeah. was destroying one another. Mm -hmm. And that's how we're going back to today. Mm -hmm. I study my history. I understand it. And I mean, it ain't about me seeing it, but the white man been trying to destroy us since we came into the earth. Mm -hmm. And I, I, I just want to fight about it. I'm not trying, I don't hate them. I don't hate nobody, but all I'm trying to say, wake up, study your history. Stop killing one another. Wake up. Everybody know, after every one of my shows, every event I sing, Wake Up Everybody by Harold Melvin and Blue Nose, because I want everybody to wake up. And if uh, Christine want me to sing it today, she gonna it, sing girl. it. She going to sing it. So I want to thank y'all for letting me come out and speak. I want to thank Christina. Christina, um, I've been knowing her since she's a kid. I ain't seen her, but I know her mother. She pulled up on me. And Christina been coming with me to events since September of last year. And I'm glad to see that you're doing your own thing. You know, blessing alopecia. Yeah. You know, I can't know. <laughs> <laughs> What's the main thing we got to answer with? <laughs> Mental health. 
<laughs> but I'm thankful that she's doing this. I'm thankful to see that you are hooked up with great people. Kenna, Rose, and you got other people out here. Keep doing your thing. You know what I'm saying? Keep doing your thing to help mental health because a lot of our brothers and sisters need it. They've been tormented. They've been abused. They've been sexually abused. A lot of people out here got issues. And some people don't handle it well. And some people don't work with it. They want to medicate us all the time. But we need someone like you to go out there and speak to them. Let them understand what it's like. Because I go through it every day. I talk to myself all the time. I just ain't announcing me back yet. Hey, I'm but meanwhile, keep doing what you're doing. Thanks, everybody. Thank you. Thank you.